Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team. If you're asking, should I move to Fishers, Indiana or the greater Indianapolis area, you'll be sure to want to take this luxury home tour. We're going to explore the three most luxurious homes on the market currently in Fishers, Indiana. Hey, follow me now. First up is 12128 Rangeview Court, also known as the Rangeview Manor, and it's said to be designed to be unforgettable. And now you'll see why. Driving by it, it just seems to go on and on. It is a one-of-a-kind uh, designed by nationally recognized designer Gary Nance. The classic exterior continues to hint at the luxury that lies within. Let's start with the stats. 14,224 square feet built in 2006. Hey, you enter the grand foyer, sweeping 20-foot ceiling, iron staircase, and an open walkway overlooking the main level. The great room down below has a massive stone fireplace. The walkway surrounds both the dining room and the fireplace opens to it as well. The masterfully designed kitchen is right next door and the morning room is off to the other side. And close by are the office nook and a deluxe laundry room. By the way, there's even a second full laundry room on the upper level. The entire house is bathed in natural light and one of my favorite features is the barrel ceiling in the main level hallway. Okay, the master bedroom ensuite is on the main level and it is the height of luxury. It has too many features even to begin to describe, but do check out the makeup counter and massive walk-in closet. There's also a main level guest suite and a godfather worthy officer study. Okay, let's go up one of the three staircases to the second floor and check out the other five bedrooms. By the way, we're gonna skip over the other bathrooms. There are 10 total, seven of them are full and they're all nicely appointed. Hey, you gotta love this grand hallway. And this scene kind of reminds me of back in college, the athletic study table. There's an overly generous basement, all finished lodge style. Check out this family room down there. And you have an all you could ask for bar setup, billiards room, and poker room even. Plus, there's an 805 square foot theater room. Heck, you could actually charge a mission to get into this. Okay, let's go back upstairs. You have a fitness room that opens to the outside. You can actually run outside and jump right in the pool. And adjoining the 20 by 43 foot uh, gunite pool is a waterfall and an outdoor kitchen. Also, while you're outdoors, you can enjoy the large covered patio and the open patio with a fire pit. And finally, there's the fact that you're facing the golf course. Do you need anything more? Actually, you can drive right into your private courtyard and start figuring out which automobiles you're going to acquire to fill your five car garage, plus another for your golf course. This is situated on a quiet cul-de-sac. The ticket on this luxurious Rangeview Manor estate is $3,195,000. It is listed by Berkshire Hathaway, but hey, FYI, I can help you with any home for sale in the state of Indiana, regardless of whether it's listed by myself or another broker. Okay, if lodge style is not your cup of tea, let's switch gears and go modern. Let's go over to 395 Breakwater Drive. And they're not kidding about the breakwater. Hey, this is set on a private one and a half acre wooded site. It's nestled on the back of a quiet cove on Geist Reservoir, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. You pull into this private oasis with its 2,400 square foot garage, then you step through the 10 foot glass entry door and welcome home. This sports six bedrooms and six and a half bathrooms. There's 9,525 square feet. It was built in 1999 and has been completely remodeled. And it is listed by the FC Tucker Company, who tells me that the heart of the home is the exquisite kitchen with its luxury appliances, mile-long quartz countertops, and custom cabinetry. My favorite feature is the waterfall countertop, which flows all the way from the countertop to the floor. It's a totally open concept. There are two living rooms, a dining area, and just a massive kitchen. The living room has a striking fireplace. The dining area is bathed in natural light and affords tranquil views. Okay, let's talk bedrooms. There's the large master with a great view, and it has an even larger closet. Some would call it a to-die-for closet. Others won't be able to get around the soaker tub and the walk-around shower. Yes, it's that big. Okay, let's switch it up and talk about something mundane. That's a joke because check out the laundry room. This is definitely not your grandmother's laundry room. And then there's the walkout basement that just won't quit. It just goes on and on. There are lots of bedrooms, all good size, and each with a connected bathroom. The patio doors lead out to the deck and there's a large patio below. 
They're all designed to take in the private grounds. And they also overlook your own private waterfront dock. And the ticket on this Breakwater Modern is 5.2. As always, if you have questions or would like to take a look, just give me a call. Hey, if you're wondering what I can bring to the table for your benefit, hey, watch this short video clip right now. There's no cost or obligation, and you just might find something that'll help make your next real estate success story. Moving on to 11101 West Hawthorne Ridge on our luxury home tour. You enter this 6.8 acre, very private, wooded, and meticulously landscaped estate through your own stone and iron gates. You pull around the circular drive in front of your 16,736 square foot manor house. Or you can pull through to your six car garage space. Just off the entry foyer is the formal living room with sweeping trusses that are probably worthy of a chapel, plus a stone wall with a fireplace. Yes, a whole stone wall. Or turn around and you can walk by the sweeping staircase which will captivate your eyes. From there, move into the main gathering room, set off with two full stories of windows topped off by a beautiful Palladian window. You enter the formal dining room through one of the many arched doorways where you can see a fabulous example of the exquisite woodwork and the extraordinary plaster work that you see throughout the house. The kitchen is not far away. It is massive and well appointed and it too has its own fireplace. And there is an adjacent family dining area. Also on the main level are a pair of screened in porches and the master bedroom suite. And it is a true suite and a magnificent one at that. There's the master bedroom with a two-sided fireplace and then a full other sitting room with a coffee bar on the other side. The bathroom is done in marble. It is massive and it is something else. Check out this shower for two plus his and hers wardrobes. Let's move upstairs on one of the two stairways. The walkway upstairs overlooks the main level and features more of the finely detailed woodwork. Upstairs you'll find five more bedrooms plus an office with a bay window. Moving now to the lower level, there's a billiards room with a full bar. Hey, it's pretty easy to see yourself sitting here enjoying a pint. There's also a good sized basketball court, a fitness room, and a theater room. And as if the interior of the house were not enough, touring the outdoor living space will make you wondering where to turn next. There's the resort style pool, the spa, and a waterfall. You can enjoy a treat at the outdoor kitchen, and be sure to make good use of the imported pizza oven. Or head on over to the covered gathering area with yet another fireplace. Or maybe you're feeling more energetic. Head on over to the outdoor basketball court for a game of hoops. And that is set amidst a six stall garage with seven bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, and 16,000 square feet. This manor home built in 2005 and set on a six point acre private area commands one's attention. It's listed by Circle Real Estate. The ticket on this estate is, catch it now, $8,249,999. As always, if I can be of service, my contact info is below. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the most luxurious homes on the market in Fishers, Indiana. Stay tuned to learn more about all that Fishers, Indiana has to offer and then we'll wrap things up with a current monthly market update. Now, if you're uncertain whether you need to buy or sell first, this is not my first rodeo. I may be able to offer some insights that would help make your journey a little smoother. I'm glad to talk out the pros and cons with you, and then you can be the judge for your own self what works best for you. By the way, we offer a free room by room analysis. There's no cost and there's no obligation. I guarantee you, I can help make you money and I can help save you money by not doing things that won't add to your bottom line. My staff and I have prepared a short film about this. It highlights 13 key points you'll wanna pay attention to so that you can sell your house for the most money. Plus, I'll share secrets on how I've sold my last five houses in a grand total of less than 30 days. Watch it now. Okay, let's talk about Fishers, Indiana and all that it has to offer. First of all, it's in, it has an ideal location perched at the northeast corner of Indianapolis. It is in Hamilton County, the fastest growing county in the state and the wealthiest county in the state. It is just off uh, Interstate 69, which very quickly takes you down, joins with uh, State Highway 37, and takes you to the Beltway, which is I-465. And from there, you can go anywhere in the metro area. Or you can shoot straight downtown in 30 minutes or less and be at the circle. There are a whole lot of jobs and employment opportunities and business opportunities located in the area. 
especially along 37 and 69 where you see manufacturing and distribution centers. You go a little further south towards the Biltway and you have Roche Diagnostics, a Fortune 500 company. There's all sorts of retail and office and service work throughout and uh, you'll also find uh, a lot of healthcare employment as well as in the educational sector. Okay, talking about schools, the kids here go to the Hamilton Southeastern school system. Uh, the schools, there's 27 of them in the system. They're all rated A or better by niche.com. And in fact, the entire school system is ranked number eight out of 290 public school systems in the state. That makes it in the top 3%. Now that is good. The Catholic high schools are A plus rated, but they're a little further away, probably about 30 minutes. And then there's Heritage Christian, which is grades K through 12, it's rated A, and it's probably more like 25 minutes away. It's right by the Beltway. Then there's a smattering of private schools, some religious oriented, some not, all throughout the, the Fishers and nearby area. If you're looking for medical care and hospitals, well, about three miles north are a community system hospital, the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital, and IU Health has hospitals there at Saxony Village. Or you can go west about the same distance and you can go over to uh, uh, Riverview has an excellent ER. And then you could go a little bit south uh, towards the Beltway and Community North, which is a very large, large hospital, is right there. Surrounding the hospitals are all sorts of ancillary medical facilities. I mean, you're talking physical therapy, occupational therapy, orthopedic, neuro, women's, peds, you name it. it around the hospitals are all sorts of medical facilities to help you with your healthcare needs. Okay, there are a ton of things to do in the Fishers area. And uh, as the video continues, we'll take you on a tour of a lot of these things. You know, we'll start maybe with Parks and Rec. There's 25 uh, parks in the uh, Fishers system. Uh, lots of great opportunities. We'll go over that and show you some of those. There's the uh, Geist uh, Waterfront Park, which is a lot of fun. And hey, then there's Geist Reservoir. How do you, how do you beat that? great way to spend a summer day. Then there's uh, tons of entertainment. You can start with the new event center, which will host the Indy Fuel, the uh, minor league hockey team for the Chicago Blackhawks. It will also host uh, concerts and theater and uh, comedy acts. And then there's three different amphitheaters, including Ruoff Music Center, which in 2018 sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out is in the top five. That's a lot of fun. We'll check uh, check that out in a little bit too. Okay, then there's golf courses galore, including the one right here in the midst of uh, these three homes. And then, hey, there's Top Golf, which is fun for everyone. We'll wrap the tour up with uh, taking a look at Hamilton Town Center and the yard, which are open air malls, uh, tons of shopping, and they have some really great restaurants. And I'll share what some of my favorites are uh, so you can put them on your list. By chance, you've seen some of these uh, uh, videos on the different attractions in the area. Just feel free to bop ahead to maybe one that you haven't seen. And regardless, you're gonna wanna stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna share a monthly market update with you. Hey, do you wanna learn everything there's to know about living in Fishers, Indiana, or homes for sale anywhere in the greater Indianapolis area? Or maybe you wanna just walk through a home you've seen advertised text me or book a call. So if you're considering moving to Fishers, you'll wanna pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your own copy below. Coming up, I'm going to share some of the top parks and recreational activities that are available practically in your own backyard. Fishers has done a really bang up job with its parks and rec department. They've got 25 parks, over 600 acres, 61 sports fields. You can rent a pavilion or an event facility. There's two sledding hills, three fishing ponds, and four creeks to stop around in. And if you have any energy left, hey, there's 131 miles of trails that you can walk and hike. Hey, or you can head on over to the Geist Waterfront Park. You can rent a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard or head out on the lake. Geist Reservoir has a full-service marina, the Geist Marina or you can head over to the public launch ramp, but get there early because it gets busy. The reservoir itself has 1,890 surface acres. It's the second largest in the state. You can tube, you can ski, you can swim, hey, or you can just chill. There's a lot of that going on. The bass fishing is pretty good. They have tournaments all summer long, or hey, you can putz around and do, you know, the multi-million dollar home tour. There are other options. You can become a member at the Indianapolis Yacht Club. And no, you don't have to own a yacht. Lynn and I got married there. It was a great time. One of our favorite things to do is to boat up to restaurants. 
be sure to check out Woofies. Check out these music and entertainment options. You won't believe all the shows you can take in. I'm sitting outside the, what will be the new Fishers Events Center. This is slated to open in December of 2024. It is a massive project. It's uh, $170 million and it will anchor a $550 million project that oh, will encompass this entire area with shops and restaurants and other fun things to do. This will be home to the Indy Fuel, which is a minor league hockey team uh, of the Chicago Blackhawks. And it'll they'll also host other sporting events, uh, including the uh, Fisher's Freight, which will be an indoor football league team that will open, I believe, in 2025. Um, it will also host uh, music and comedy and theater and seat anywhere from 6,500 to 8,500 people. And this is all within walking distance of the yard. Yeah, Nickel Plate Amphitheater in Fishers, Indiana. This uh, facility seats 6,000 people, lawn style seating. They have a full slate of different kinds of music throughout the summertime and fall. Uh, something for everybody. One of the nice things is you can eat at one of the local uh, restaurants, come watch the show, enjoy it, and then go finish the night off at a local pub. Hey, this is a ticket you might want to score. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year round. They have a variety of activities, uh, including hot air balloons and uh, oh, the what is this, uh, 150 or 200, 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately, it's February and we're not gonna get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime, they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie. And the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, in 2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or you know, some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage. And hey, it's a good time, it really is. I know people that have like tickets for the whole season, all 12 nights. I usually make it out once, maybe twice at the most, but uh, hey, I have a busy summer, so, but hey, it is a good time. Okay, let's uh, finish our music tour with uh, the cream de la cream. Uh, let's go look at Ruoff Music Center. This is Ruoff Music Center. Now it's February and things are buttoned up really tight. Uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here. But at any rate, I'll flash you some photos. You've got to, you've got to think about this. This seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music, all-star lineup. You can get a season pass even. And uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world. In fact, in 2018, Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, they're in the top five. I mean, just crazy. Now, if you get the uh, Premier or the Legends Pass, uh, parking passes, you can pull right up to the turnstiles, you can tailgate, you can walk right in. And then uh, at the end of the night, you don't have to sneak out early. You can stay till the very end, you catch the encore, you walk out, it's five minutes to get out of the parking lot and you're another, what, two, three, five minutes home? Hey, it's a great time. We're gonna stop into two of the area's top golf courses and then check out Top Golf, which is always a great time, even if you're not a golfer. Hey, let's talk golf. Fishers has been ranked by one golf magazine or another as the number two most underrated golf community in the entire United States. So I asked uh, my stepson, Seve, and one of his former college teammates, which were the best golf courses in Fishers. And they both independently came up with the same two names, River Glen and Ironwood. We're gonna take a tour of both of them uh, in just a second here. It's a uh, breezy day in February, and uh, while it's pretty comfortable, the course is closed because it's wet right now and they're trying to get it into shape. But uh, 
this course is really pretty. They call it uh, nature's course. It sits along the White River and um, it is a really delightful course to play. I'm gonna walk around here and see what we can see. Got 18 holes here plus a driving range. They have uh, men's, women's, and junior leagues. They also have a very nice large pool and pool memberships. Uh, they also have a lot of event space here. They do banquets. In fact, uh, years ago when I ran a mortgage company, we used to do our uh, celebration uh, breakfast meetings here. Very nice. Uh, there's three memberships. There's a regular, a junior, and a family fun, which includes the pool. But just standing here, you can really see just how pretty this course is. Nice big deck up there. Just look out over all of this. Really beautiful. River Glen Country Club. Okay, I'm at Ironwood Golf Club in uh, Fishers, Indiana. And it is the end of February. And look at that parking lot. It is full of golfers out playing. How cool. They've got a driving range. Nice. Lots of woods, water. And then over here, uh, they've got 27 hole course. Wines all over the place. Very pretty. Good course to play on. Well maintained. They uh, have a variety of leagues. Uh, a full junior program with leagues, camps uh, for kids all the way from five and up. They've got uh, the driving range and lessons. And they have memberships for uh, singles, family, junior, senior, and young professionals. So take your pick. And then up there at the clubhouse, they also have some banquet facilities. This is uh, a course that if you move to Fishers, Indiana, you just might want to play. While we're talking golf, let's talk top golf. Uh, this is a Tuesday afternoon in February, and the parking lot still has a good number of cars, but this will fill up and uh, be crazy about half the time. Inside, they've got a hundred climate controlled bays. And this is more like going bowling than it is playing golf. I mean, you don't have to have your own clubs. It's like uh, when you go to the bowling alley and yeah, there's some people that walk in with all the official gear and they've got their own ball and bag and all that and shoes. But, uh, you know, the rest of us go in there, pick a ball out, stumble to the uh, lane and uh, throw it down there. Well, here at Top Golf. Um, it's kind of the same. You don't have to have your own clubs. Uh, there's no cost to rent them. Um, they have all sorts of events and you can see the bays here from the outside and then uh, out there into a hitting area. The uh, balls are uh, high tech and they score for you. They do all kinds of events and games. And uh, one of the neat things is there's like a bar and a restaurant. There's 200 TV scattered throughout. And uh, there's even uh, fire pits up on top of the uh, rooftop terrace. So this is great for uh, old birthday parties and uh, other kinds of get togethers. Uh, companies uh, do outings here. Uh, it's a lot of fun and you know, you get to hit a bucket of balls and if you don't want to hit the whole bucket, somebody else will hit yours and uh, you can sit down and drink. Hey, it's a good time one way or another. Join me as we tour amazing shopping destinations plus the fabulous foodie scene. I'll share a couple of my faves so you can add them to your must try list. Get through here, it's got a, just a really wide variety of shops and really good restaurants and in the areas surrounding uh, as well. So tons and tons of uh, retail shops and uh, food places and what have you. You've got uh, livery here, which is, oh, I'd call upscale Mexican. It's a Cunningham property and all of their restaurants are great. You've got Ford's Garage, which has uh, oh, really good burgers. And it's kind of interesting, fun place, the, the way some of their marketing and, and just little things like uh, napkins and, oh, different things that they do inside that really are kind of interesting make it kind of fun you got a total wine for all your uh, beer and wine needs you can't find it there I'm not sure you can find it anywhere 
over here you got DSW and Ben's Warehouse and oh, just all sorts of different places. We're gonna take a ride down this little street. Very walkable. We got an old Navy here. Lita Express, K Jewelers, Victoria's Secret, Soma. It's a fun place to shop. More shopping than I can do. Through 21, finish line. American Eagle over here. Five guys. Yats. The Three Dog Bakery. My wife spends too much money there. Up on the corner here we have uh, pies and pints. Pretty good pizza. Real good salads. Over here is Stone Creek, another Cunningham property, one of my more favorite restaurants. And right in front of us is Dick's Sporting Goods. So just all kinds of uh, opportunity here to satisfy your retail and dining pleasure. Got a big movie theater to go along with it. We're getting ready to head into the yard and I wanted to stop just on the outskirts here. This is Portillo's, and uh, I'm not a big fast food guy, but this is a place I make exceptions for. When I was in high school uh, in Chicagoland, these were little hot dog carts on the corner, and we would go there at the end of the night and get a Chicago dog or an Italian sa uh, sausage sandwich or their big beef, and uh, boy, I think they're the best in the world. I like my uh, big beef with sweet peppers and I like it dipped. Try it. We're coming into the yard, which is a recent development, maybe in the last five years. Uh, lots of restaurants, uh, other shops as well. Uh, this is the Hamilton uh, County Tavern and Kitchen. It is a Hughes Culinary property. They are fabulous, all of them. Make a little right here on the cobblestone street. You've got uh, some upscale apartments up above, some different uh, types of shops like, uh, oh, uh, Hot Sauna and Athletic Annex. Over here you have Rise, which is an excellent uh, breakfast place. You have Kincaid's Meat Market, which uh, goes back for many, many decades some salons, you've got a winery, you've got slap fish, you've got a Mexican cantina here on the corner, and right here you have one of my very favorites, which is San Giovese. It's one of the better Italian places around. They have good lasagna. They have maybe the best chicken parm in the entire city. Uh, over here you have Sun King Brewery. Uh, everybody loves their uh, cream ale. You've got the test kitchen. And then over here, we have the Havana Cigar Lounge, if you're into that. And then the 1933 Lounge and the 101 Beer Pub. And there's a few others too. Um, the 1933 Lounge is interesting. It's another Hughes culinary uh, property. And you can notice up there on the sign it says 1933 Lounge by St. Elmo. Well, St. Elmo is uh, the most famous steakhouse in the city. It opened in 1902. People from all over the country uh, eat there when they're in town. All the, you find all the celebrities and sportscasters and all of that. Um, it was named because uh, during the Prohibition years, there was a speakeasy above St. Elmo's. And uh, so this property right here, the 1933 Lounge, is modeled after the uh, a speakeasy. My wife and I ate there the other night for Valentine's Day. It was great. They have to die for shrimp cocktail. 
uh, prime steaks, and I had a slab of prime rib that was just fabulous. Um, hey, it's something you might wanna check out. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. We're about to put the winter months behind us and enter the spring selling season. Currently, there are 427 homes in Hamilton County with four sale signs in the front yard. That's 12% fewer than a year ago, and that's causing prices to remain sticky. Basically, they're unchanged from a year ago with the median price being $420,000. But so right today, you can still find a house for sale for $230,000. Or hey, you can go to the other end of the spectrum and there's one on the market for over $8 million. Unlike Austin, San Francisco, and Boise, our market has slowed only slightly. A year ago, it took 10 days to sell a house, and now, oh my God, it takes 13 days. Price per square foot has increased just from $165 to $175, and that's basically due to the larger number of new construction homes being sold. Hey, not only is everything brand spanking new, but builders are offering 30-year fixed rate mortgages as low as 4.99%. You might wanna give me a call. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. On Thursday we do a walkthrough of existing homes for sale in their surrounding neighborhoods. And on Saturday we give you a feel for what it's like to live in Indiana. So whether you're buying or selling, know that I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.